Hello. All right, so I'm going to talk to you guys about how I've made my own um, free science curriculum, and I'm using it for multiple grades also. So I think this is a, a good subject to be integrated with your kids of all different grades. I'm using it right now for kindergarten and third grade, but I did decided that I didn't want to pay for science this year, so I thought I would make my own. Of course, any time that you make your own curriculum, I think that um, the good thing about that is you get to really cater it to what your kids want to learn, what you want to teach, and just make it really fun and make it work for your family so it's super, you know, customized. But the bad part about it is, of course, it's going to take you a lot more time than purchasing a curriculum that's already made, obviously. So I did spend, I would say, about a month um, during the summer, just kind of on and off, going through stuff and um, doing it, you know, like an hour here, an hour there. I didn't spend like every day on it, but uh, so it didn't take me too long. I don't think that, and I do think it was worth the time that I invested in it, and I actually kind of enjoy doing stuff like that. I don't know if you do or if that curriculum kind of stuff bores you, but I enjoy planning and especially during the summer when I don't have school going on and I have some extra time. So that was nice. But um, what I did was I kind of decided how, first, how often I wanted to teach science. And we are doing a four-day school week. Um, we're doing extra weeks. Instead of 36 weeks, we do 45 weeks of school. So we only school four days a week. And I've decided to do science two days a week and history two days a week. So with science only being two days a week, you know, that makes it easy and it just needs to be really fun. So the first day of science is kind of like, usually we'll end up doing obviously a lesson, we'll do some reading, and then we usually watch a YouTube video about whatever we're discussing. Then the second day of the week on science will be again some more reading, and then we usually do, I try to do either a really, really fun activity or an experiment. So for an activity, I'll either do like a craft or we'll go on a nature walk, which our yard is super small, so nature walks here are not a big thing, but sometimes we venture out into the surrounding areas and do nature walks because we had to leave the house for that is my point. We can't really do it at the house. But um, science experiments are my kids' favorite part of school, favorite, favorite thing. So I tried to just make sure this year that we did one every single week. Um, last year we did sunlight and we did their science program, and they do have a, a experiment scheduled every week, but we didn't do it every week. <laughs> So this year I'm like, we are doing an experiment every week. So I decided that for experiments especially, I need to do things that are easy and that most of the materials I have at home or I could get them really easily and cheaply at the grocery store when I buy my groceries. So our science experiments are pretty simple. Um, I am going to be making a online, I'm not sure what you call it, but it's kind of like a course because you will, it's got video, like a video course, but it's really just outlining my science curriculum. So if you guys are interested in my, you know, my science curriculum, I'm going to have that on there, and it'll be a monthly fee, and I'm going to make it very small monthly fee, because the whole point of this curriculum is to be um, free. Obviously, this won't be free if you pay for mine, but it'll be very cheap. So um, if you're interested in that, just let me know. I ha have not put it up yet. I'm just starting on that just now, but I'll let you guys know, probably put out a video later when it's actually ready. But if you want to make it yourself, you can do so. Like I said, it's just going to take a little bit of extra time, but totally worth it because you can, you know, do whatever you want for your kids. So, okay, so I'm doing two days a week and I have 45 weeks. And so that equaled 90 days. What I did was I broke ours down by five nine week sections. So for those five, nine weeks, I have kind of, I decided on a bigger, broader topic that I wanted to teach. So for the first nine weeks, we we did intro to science. And then what I did was I broke that down even further by week. So let me see. For the first nine weeks, week one, we do a STEM challenge. And that was just, that was the first week of school. I wanted it to be something super fun and just kind of get them used to this is what time, or this is when in our routine that we do science, but it was just really fun. And then week two, we learned about the scientific method. Um, week three, oh, week two, I'm sorry, was what is a scientist and the scientific method. And then we did famous scientist for the next two weeks, and I did, then I, of course, after each week, I break that down even further. So, like, we did Benjamin Franklin. Alexander Graham Bell, Johann Gutenberg, Louis Braille, Thomas Edison, 
And then the Wright brothers, Henry Ford, Jane Goodall, George Washington Carver, and James Naismith. So then we did, and all throughout that, we kind of went back and did the scientific method. And I had some fun experiments just to, like, illustrate the scientific method. And we did a chart, and then we did the five senses. So that was the first nine weeks. Second nine weeks, we did solar system, and I broke that down by planets, moons, sun, rotation, day and night, telescopes, and then another week of planets, um, famous astronauts, and learn about NASA, stars, and then we're going to, on week nine, actually do, I put recap, but we're also going to do a um, field trip to the TELUS Museum, which has a planetarium and things like that. Okay, so that was the second nine weeks, and then third nine weeks, we're doing animals, and again, let me see if I've already broke that down, because we haven't got to that yet. Yep. Okay, week one, we're doing different habitats. Week two, life cycles. Week three, ocean life. Week four, insects. Week five, reptiles. Six was amphibians. Seven, birds. Eight, mammals. Nine, finished habitat books and animal cell. And for that, we are making a habitat book for each week as well. First, that. Then we're doing weather and earth for another nine weeks. We're doing matter, energy, and magnets for another nine weeks. And the last nine weeks, I planned some some weeks that were just like the fifth nine weeks that we have. I plan like some sensory concoctions, water experiments, magnets, light, energy, stuff like that. Okay, so basically once I got my basic outline down, like I said, I broke it down further into weeks. And then what I did was I went on Pinterest. <laughs> so, and I actually looked up really fun activities and experiments to go along with each of those topics. And I'm making this free because I'm using books that I already have here. I'm using Pinterest for ideas and I'm using YouTube for videos and I'm utilizing the library. So we'll go to the library and we'll get books um, related to each topic, of course. So I also want to show you these. Since I really want to focus on just having fun with science this year, I have each of my kids a science experiment booklet. And I just made my own worksheets, but whenever they complete an experiment, they have a little sheet in here. And we're putting it in here so that just so that we can remember and kind of look back on all the fun science experiments that we did this year. I love these. I just wanted to show you all these. If you have a subscription to a magazine, these are awesome because you can use it for, oh, that's a cute bear. <laughs> Anyways, you can use it to cut out pictures. That's what we did for one of our science charts that we did. We cut pictures out of animals doing different things out of our work uh, magazine because we have a subscription to this National Geographic Kids. Once we read them and we're done with them, I put them in a bin and they become our, like kind of like our art magazines that we can cut out of. So that's what I do with magazines. And, of course, some really good, if you don't have a lot of science books at home, you know, you can definitely go to the library or you can just use what you have. Um, some of the books that I would recommend if you're just going to be, like, maybe getting some on Amazon or going to the library, um, this book, The Us Born Book of Science Activities. This one has tons of experiments, and they're all very easy to do, and they all use, you know, household items. So I really like this book because it's doable. If I get, like, a book that has too much stuff in it, I, I know myself I won't do it. But this book I like. Everything in here I think is doable. Um, another really cool book that was in our um, Science from Sunlight last year that I would recommend is by DK, and it's See How It's Made. My kids love this book. It is so cool. It's kind of like the show See How It's Made, but in a book. And, of course, us homeschool moms like books, so... Like the very first one on here is Sony. It's like, it says oil paint and it tells you some cool facts about it and just interesting stuff. And then it'll always go through the whole process and tell you the materials and like step one, step two, step three of how everything's made. And then it usually has another page on oil paint. Oh, okay. Ice cream? I mean, how cool. This book is awesome. I love it. And I found this book at Five Below over the summer and I picked it up. And we've actually done about five experiments from here so far and loved it. So this one was the 101 Coolest Simple Science Experiments. I really like it because it has pictures, and I like pictures, and it tells you the prep time involved and then how long the experiment actually takes, so that's kind of neat. But this one's really cool. It has some really neat stuff in here. 
sometimes, well, during the summer when we when we have more time, I just let my kids a couple of times pick. Like, what do you want to do? Let's pick one of these. Oh, we did this. The naked eggs. I'm sure you guys have heard of this, but if not, it's really cool. <laughs> it's like where you put the egg in vinegar and you leave it in there and it eats away at the shell and then you pull the egg out and it's like this jelly ball. That was cool. My kids like that. All right, so that's pretty much it. Basically, YouTube library and your home library and then just extra time is really all you need to make your own science curriculum. And the good thing about that is you can make it work for multiple grades. So for my third grader, a lot of times I will actually print off a couple of worksheets or even make up my own questions to ask her and have her fill it out. And then with my kindergartner, I'll do little sheets where he has to color something that he learned or you know, you can just really customize it and you can teach everybody together at one time. So we do a lot of our subjects together. It really saves time when you're teaching multiple children. But that's it for my science plan. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and maybe I gave you some ideas. If you do want to um, contact me about actually getting my science curriculum that I've made, just let me know and I will make that available as soon as possible. I promise. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.